Hi everyone and welcome to episode 80 of Sama. When Sama first started, I was so nervous at the start of everyone. But now when I start Sama, the very first thing I do, even before I check all my hardware, the microphone's working, the camera's working, I look to see who's online and I look for the um, the, f the familiar faces, the people that have been there from the, pretty much the very beginning. And they're the people that have made it easy for me. People like Bev Wright, um, Margaret and Thomas and Carmen. The people that have become my friends, friends that I haven't met, although I've met Ed. But there's most of you I've never met. and Most probably I never will, but I'd love to. So if I'm ever in your part of town, then I'll, I'll make an effort to, to meet you. But... Um, now we're on to episode 80 of Sama, and I've left my nerves far behind, and now I actually look forward to talking to you guys and interviewing the expert that we have on the show for the week. Well, this week's a week where we don't have an expert, <laughs> so I can stop watching this video right now, but we've got me instead, and I'm going to talk about this little thing. It's Spooky Scalar Digitizer. It's a device that turns your scalar device into a biofeedback device as well. So when you bought your scalar, you didn't realize you'd ever see this sort of capability, did you? But <laughs> it's life, you know. Life is a funny way of giving good surprises, and this is a good surprise. Scalar digitizer. With this unit, you can plug it into your spooky scalar, and you can indirectly monitor the scalar field between your two units. And they can monitor the changes in the scalar field. If you apply a varying frequency, a frequency sweep to the modulation input of your spooky scalar, you can measure the response of that. And then you can use those frequencies for treatment. Already we've got a chat message. Oh, from Carmen, just saying thanks. Hi, Carmen. I love you. Yeah, we've got to meet sometime. We've got to find some time to go to Australia. We've been to um, the UK, Ireland. We've been to Poland. Poland was fantastic. Italy, Italy was amazing too. We've been to America, big America. Gosh, wasn't that an eye opener? We met so many good people. Wow, amazing people. Um, and we'd love to meet more. So. Um, we hope to come to some time. <laughs> You're part of town. Okay, so back to the digitizer. This is the digitizer. It simply plugs in, then you run the, um, the software, and then you um, find the frequencies that you that had the, uh, the strongest response, and then you run it. Now, I've provided a PowerPoint, and so I'll share my screen and present that to you now. So here we go. Okay, this is it. Spooky 2 Scalar Digitizer. These are the things which I'll be covering today. I've moved my picture at the bottom so I don't get in the way later on. What is Spooky 2 Scalar Biofeedback Scan? And how do Scalar Biofeedback Scans something? How to, or how to do by Scalar Biofeedback Scans? That makes sense. And the general Q&A. Now, as I go through this, presentation you may have questions um, that come to mind just type them either through Facebook or through the zoom software and Sam will forward them to me and I'll answer them at the end of this presentation I can't see your questions online but I'll have my phone on so I can try and catch the questions as they come through okay onwards and upwards Spooky 2 Scalar Biofeedback Scan. It's a way of finding out what frequencies are best suited for your body. And it's the only scalar device capable of doing biofeedback scans anywhere, I'm told, in the entire universe. The Spooky 2 Scalar Digitizer measures tiny changes in the scalar field during a frequency scan. Now, the biofeedback required two generators. Um, now, Generator X, fortunately, is two generators built into one. 
And so one generator modulates the scalar field whilst the other one measures the changes in the scalar field. And so the things, it's like a recipe, isn't it, before you bake a cake? Ingredients. One times spooky two scalar. <laughs> one times uh, spooky two scalar digitizer. One teaspoon of spooky two generator X and a cup of BNC cables. That's two of them. How to do them. Okay. Well, it's given as four steps. First of all, you do the hardware connection. Then you do the software operation. And you start it and then you run into results. Okay. Step number one. Gosh, this sounds almost military, doesn't it? You connect the scalar digitizer to the link cable port on the scalar transmitter. The transmitter is the box that's got the display there, it's got the knob, and it's got the two plugs and the socket. We well, plug it into the link cable socket, as you see on this photograph. You then connect generator number one, output number one, to the BNC port of the scalar digitizer. That's this port just over there. On the digitizer, is that, is that one there? That's called a BNC port. You then connect generator number two, output number one again, to the BNC port of the Spooky2 scalar transmitter. That's the metal connector that's built into the transmitter unit. You then connect generator number one, output one. Oh, I've done that. I did that in the first step. You do it twice then. <laughs> well, miss out the first line. You turn on and tune your Spooky2 scaler. Now this PowerPoint must be done in a hurry. Okay, the tip. <laughs> your generator X must not be in the scalar field because the case, which is metal, and the electronics in the generator X will distort the field. You've got to keep anything that's metallic or anything at least a meter away from the uh, two units. You can see there the units are far apart. Now in the demonstration today, I've got everything in the scalar field. I'm talking about everything, even this thing here. So the results are going to be rather wild. But we'll just um, keep that in mind, okay? If we did have this unit set up correctly, you wouldn't be able to see it on the video. You then launch the Spooky2 software. Now it's important to make a note of which generator is connected to which port number. The port number are the box numbers that come up in your software. Here you can see generator number one is port 14 and generator number two is port 15. It's shown on the generator display. You select the preset for the slave. You set up the slave first. And then you set up the shadowing to follow the output number one. Output number one is port number 14. And so you enter number 14 in the output shadowing tab. I'll be doing this again in the demonstration. So don't worry too much about that. If you didn't get that first time, we'll get it the second time. You then go to the control tab. You click on allow or overwrite generator and choose generator number two. Now when you do that, you actually load the contents into the generator number two memory location. So then you can forget about generator number two. And we start focusing on the master, which is generator number one. So you choose the master preset and you again click on overwrite generator and click on the generator number one, which is number 14. Well, that's all the hard work done. All you've got to do is start the unit. You lie between the two scalar units and you ask an assistant to click the scan button to start the biofeedback scan. Now, if you're just by your lonesome, you can alter the value of the start delay, this, this value over here. 
And so the start delay, you can make that whatever you like. So if you're a slow mover, you can make it 2000. And it gives you enough time to go between the units, sit down, make yourself comfortable, drink a cup of coffee, or well, probably not that much time, but at least give you enough time to settle down and get ready for the biofeedback scan. Spooky will, will give a little gentle beep after the scan is completed, so you don't have to spend all night there. Now generator number two, which is the slave generator, will start automatically. And so generator number two sends the frequencies to the scalar unit. Generator number one thinks it is, but it's not because it's actually been set to not produce any signal output. So generator number one will still measure the signal that's being, <laughs> being produced by the scalar field and so perform the biofeedback that way. Now when the scan completes, you'll see the results presented in a new window, and then you save the frequency results by clicking on the Save button. That's no different from before. You then use the Scalar to Scalar General preset to run these results. Okay, there's a few more tips, everybody. It's best to lie perfectly still, but this really applies to all biofeedbacks. The more stationary you can be, the better the results. And it is best to have only one person in the scalar field. Now, the field extends outward, like an American football or a Zeppelin. And so you've got to ensure that nothing is in the field that's going to affect the results. Things like cell phones, electronics of any sort, <laughs> my laptop is in the field, but well, anything. It's best to be as, have as good a signal or a pure signal as possible. Okay, and I've already mentioned it's important to make a note which port numbers correspond to G1 and G2. You can write that down on a piece of paper if you wish. And the master preset performs the recording the slave does all the work the slave actually applies the frequencies now we suggest using generator number one for the master and generator number two for the slave you can do short slave uh, short scans once a day longer scans once a week and when you do run the results it's uh, you use generator number two to run the scan results because remember generator number two is actually applying those frequencies. There is a facility within Spooky to scan and run, and then scan and run, scan and run. And when you do the run, you select number two. Generator number two is the generator to run the frequencies that were found, not generator number one. This is the Q&A that a lot of people have asked in the past, so we've got them all together to present them to you now. That wasn't a photo of me as a child. The child hasn't got my eyebrows. I've always had my eyebrows. And in answer to all these questions that I get sent, no, they're not painted on, they're real. What exactly do you do after running a scalar biofeedback scan? Well, after you complete a scan, you, can, uh, you will be presented with a list of frequencies. You then save the frequencies in a custom program. And you can run these through your scalar unit using a scalar preset. Okay, um, now a question has come through, but I can't see the question unless I exit out. So I will continue and I'll just quickly see if there's any questions come through. Nothing on Facebook, come on guys. Get those questions pouring in. Okay, now you basically run the frequencies and then you load them in a scalar preset and run them. There's a link here to help give you know to present more information. So just um, you can't click on this link because it's a video, but just uh, go to this link and you'll get more information from this. Okay, what method do you suggest for actually running the frequencies found in the scalar biofeedback? You can run the hits using any method. You can use remote or contact. But scalar is the best because that's how the frequencies were found. And it's always best to apply the frequencies 
in the same way that they are found. If you need to do a biofeedback using contact mode and spooky pulse, it's best to apply those frequencies also using contact mode. You can use Generator X or the XM generator for the contact mode. That doesn't make any difference, but it's always best to use the same mode. Why can't Spooky Scale Up Digitizer be used with the XM generator? Gosh, wouldn't that be amazing? Because the XM generator is so good, so cheap. Generator X measures tiny changes in the scalar field during a scan. Unfortunately, the XM generator doesn't have the magical electronics inside to let that happen. And so only the generator X has the ability to measure signals. The XM generator can only produce signals, it can't monitor signals. I guess if it monitored signals, it would be much more expensive because the electronics and the um, design and everything that went into that was quite substantial. Where can I put the DNA sample whilst doing scalar biofeedback scans? Now scalar digitizer is different from the sample digitizer. You don't need to have your DNA on it. You just need to lie between the two scalar boxes. And there's another link that gives more information on that. You said before that biofeedbacks cannot be performed whilst in the scalar field. Doesn't this contradict your scalar digitizer biofeedback scan? Now the digitizer measures tiny changes to the scalar field during these scans and other methods of biofeedback will be affected by that scan. So while you're doing your scalar biofeedback scan, you, if you can, turn your other signals off. Okay, our questions come in from Mario Santiago. How long does, it, does a short and long biofeedback last? Well, generally with any biofeedbacks with generator Rex, they're quite short because they're so fast. And so we're looking like about 10 minutes, 12 minutes, that sort of region. So Mario, it's, it's not, very, not very long at all. I'll be going through and showing you the um, latest pre-release of Spooky. We'll have a bit of a play with it. And we can see the estimated times that come up. With, of course, Spooky Pulse, you're sitting down for hours and that's not much fun. But um, Generator X changed the rules a little bit. <laughs> Why is it important to have Generator X outside the scalar field whilst doing a biofeedback? Will the generator X interfere with the field while not using the scalar digitizer? Well, mm, have I answered this one? Did I go up again? Or <laughs> anything that's metal or biological in the scalar field will alter it. Now, if it's something that's always stationary, it won't have too much of an effect, unless it's metal, which tends to absorb a lot of the information. So, if, you've got, if you are sitting on a chair that's got some metal in it, that may not be a problem, because A, the metal mass is not very large, B, the chair is not moving, or I hope it's not moving, and so it won't vary for the course of the biofeedback. But if it's something that may move, may change during the biofeedback, then you want to not have that there. So um, I think that answers that one. I wonder why that question came through twice. Is really? Why? It's the third time? Okay, well, we'll go, we'll go with it, guys. So I'm going to answer the same question three times. Um, and of course, the biofeedback is very accurate and sensitive and any kind of disturbance will affect the results and so generator x will measure this disturbance and if the disturbance isn't from the cells in your body then it's regarded as bad information and so this is why we try and keep everything away from the field okay we finally got through that question and we're on to another one now why does the receiver light go off 
than using the scale of digitizer. Now, normally the receiver light should be on, but it may be more dim, it may be a lot more dim, because some power is lost in the digitizer. The link cable becomes more sensitive to the effects of earthing. Now, if you have the light go off, you can lift up the link cable so it's not touching the ground, and then you may find that the receiver light comes on very, very dimly. Now, I want to make an important point here. The receiver light is not measuring the scalar field directly, it's indirectly. What it's measuring is an electrical current that's induced in the secondary of a transformer, which in turn um, reflects the signal that's going through the scalar field. And so it's not the pure scalar field. The scalar field at this point in time, um, we do not know a way of directly measuring. And so we've got to measure it indirectly. Now, when you have a current passing through a coil and the coil gets a load on it, we'll say that the generator X inside the scalar field is a load or the sample digitizer is a load, more current will flow through the coil, but the magnetic field will be reduced because the receiver light relies on the magnetic field, the light will become reduced. Even though the field itself has got more current passing through it, it's showing up as being reduced because of the way it's indirectly being measured. So just because the receiver light is, being, uh, is less bright, it doesn't mean that the scalar field is not so strong. And in fact, I've tuned our units where the scalar field, the, the receiver LED is off completely. And that is because the voltage is less than the light voltage, the LED voltage that's on the receiver unit. The signal is being sunk, is being, is being drawn to what is in the field. But that thing that was in the field was the digitizer that was doing the biofeedback scan. So you don't need the light to be on to give the optimum tuning point. So um, I just thought I'd make that point. Okay, uh, Jamil Baraka asks a question. Um, okay, it's the first time he's used the scalar digitizer. And he's noticed that the frequency range, that this is in the preset, is 100 hertz to 50 kilohertz. Is there any reason why the range is only up to 50 kilohertz? Well, that is actually the optimum range for the scalar modulation. You can modulate up to 5 megahertz if you wish, but the scalar field becomes distorted. It's distorted because more of the scalar field is information rather than field itself. The scalar field transports information, but if there's more information passing through, then there's less scalar field, if you like, until the end, I guess, or you end up with with this, a modulation signal and no scalar field. And so we've opted for 50 kilohertz, which gets a huge swath of results in the biofeedback. And another question from Jamil, how do we know if the generator is correctly connected or functioning? Well, if you've got concerns about whether the modulation is working, you can select a slow frequency within the spooky database and run that. The coil tester will flash if you place it on the transmitter coil. And in that way you can see that the transmitter is modulating. I heard my phone beep a couple of times. There's a couple of questions that have come through. If you put a vitamin or mineral in the field, is it equivalent to giving yourself the vitamin? Oops, I've got a... Um, vitamin or giving yourself the metabolic response to the vitamin it's a very good question this was from jory uh, Pom, uh pomerans um yeah, fantastic question jory um it's best to put the substance on the receiver coil now the scalar research is still in its infancy and so we don't know all the answers for sure but this is what we are fairly sure on to date. The best way to 
put information into the scalar field is through putting a substance on the receiver coil that then modulates the scalar field in that way. If you have the vitamin in the scalar field with you, we haven't seen the evidence showing that the goodness of that substance is then transferred to yourself. And so um, that's partly answering your question. And you're asking, is it equivalent to giving yourself the vitamin or giving yourself the metabolic response to the vitamin? Well, it's both the same thing. It's um, the, this is the thing that we touched on early on. We were modulating in the beginning and with tests that we did uh, using frequencies and then we tried molecular modulation and we found that it's better to put the molecule um, on the coil than to modulate through frequency because when you've got a substance, you may know it's molecular weight, but there's more to it than that. Um, the molecular weight provides a frequency, but the substance provides the song, the song of the substance, and the song of the substance then um, passes through your body. We, uh, after you've gone, uh, after you've applied a scalar field with a vitamin on the trans uh, on the receiver unit. You know, um, your body has received all the benefits from the vitamin. After leaving the field, we do not know whether the, the effects of the vitamin still remain in your body. I believe it does. Um, with other clinics that have used our device and other scalar devices, because there are other units out there as well, you just got to pay a little bit more for them. Um, you, people go in for half hour treatments. And then for the rest of the day or until the next day, they receive the benefits of that treatment. And so it could well be that the, um, the effects of the compound remain in your body. When Buki Scalar was first released, actually before it was released, we got a, a mayday call from some people that needed it for emergency. And one was a woman that had a very, very serious cancer, and Scalar dealt that cancer a mortal blow. Uh, this woman used her chemotherapy on the receiver coil and got fantastic results this way. So, but she didn't remain in the field all the time, and so it could well be that she was getting the effects of this chemotherapy drug during the rest of the day. Okay, uh, a question from Lawrence Lee. How far should the Generator X be away? Well, when we ship the BNC cables with the scalar units, we actually ship our long cables with the units because we want the unit as far away as possible. So I like to think two meters, which is, I think, the length of the cables. It might even be a little bit longer, but we say two meters away from the field and the units. Now the field does extend outwards, so try and get it away from both units, which is very different to how I'm going to show you in a short while in this demonstration. Okay, back to the Q&A. Does it matter with temperature changes like extreme cold? Oh, poor Ellen, extreme cold. Yeah, I'd love to live in the tropics, especially right at the moment. Okay, I'm thinking of having the cable outside for some of the distance. Now, temperature doesn't matter, but it's temperature changes that does. Uh, with a change in temperature, you may have a change in the tuning frequency. And so if the temperature does change, just check the tuning. Make sure that it's still tuned correctly. That question from Dave Brown. What are the differences between Rife Generator X machines and Scalar for beginners? <laughs> Well, there's lots of differences, but the biggest one I'd say is that Spooky Scalar produces a different type of field. Now, it's the only type of field that's truly healing. It's a naturally healing field, and it's got other properties which are very important as well. It can carry information, which makes it an ideal method of treatment. 
And this information can be from a healing herb, essential oil, or even drugs. And so you're using a healing field to produce the biofeedback scan. And so it's the only unit that we know that can do this. Um, also, it's very precise. The signal is more stable. And there's been changes too in the release of Spooky and the release to come for Spooky. And we'll be coming to that very shortly. Why not make it backward compatible with the XM generator? Curtis, we'd love to, but it hasn't got the electronics inside it. It's a shame. We'd love to. That's it. Okay, so I'll stop my share and get back to the Zoom meeting. I heard a few things come through, a few messages. So I'll answer a few questions here, then I'll fire up the, um, I'll explain, I'll, I'll go to the other camera, show you how to connect the unit, and then show you how to run the software. Okay. A question from, I'll expand the, uh, let's have a look so I can see the, the full name. Thomas Gersten is asking to scan frequencies for a brain tumor. Now, brain tumors are actually, it's always been a problem in the past because the skull does not conduct electricity. There is a capacitance, so maybe you can get high frequencies through. But then there's the problem of passing any sort of electricity through your brain because there's, an, there's a very important organ that's inside here and you don't want to be passing too much power through there. And so it's always been a bit of a problem. So to scan frequencies for brain tumor, okay, the question is actually how to place TENS pads on Generator X, because uh, we suggest to place the pads on the shoulders and not in the head. Well, this is a bit of a diversion, Thomas, but I will answer it anyway. It's Friday, uh, Friday anyway, so we'll do it. Okay, so to scan for brain tumor, um, <laughs> We do recommend, and we we, um, we, do, we do recommend for good reason, not to have tens pads above the shoulder, because of the importance of the organs that are above there. On your neck, you've got your thyroid, and you mustn't overstimulate your thyroid for many good reasons. And your brain to pass electricity through your brain is not a good thing. You've got to be very careful. If you do, you've got to keep the power levels down. And so our advice is always not to put the TENS pads on your temples. Now, Spooky 2 does have, in that Spooky Boost, a low power port, which is also its colloidal silver port. And so, yes, some people have used that port and used TENS pads across their scalp and monitored the results of a biofeedback scan. We cannot recommend that. The alternative, of course, Thomas, is to use a spooky scalar and scan yourself through that because, of course, a scalar field is a healing natural field. It will not cause any harm. Okay, another question from you, Thomas. If you do a longer scan on the weekend, how do you combine or use the results with the daily shorter scans? I know use results and totally short of scan. Well, you create programs and you run the programs and set up the program using the dwells that you want to make it longer. Uh, oh, I think um, how do you uh, how do you combine scan results to shorter scans? Okay, at the moment, Thomas, when you do recursive scans, what Thomas I think is talking about is this. You run a scan and then you do subsequent scans. Thomas is asking, can you do a long scan and then do short scans after that? Well, you can do it in a way because what you're talking about, Thomas, is a refined scan. We do a scan and then after this long scan, Spooky will just focus on the hits and then we'll keep on focusing on the hits. And there's a, um, the hunt and kill preset does that for you. So have a look at the hunt and kill preset and that will, um, that will do as, as you ask. Okay, now Carmela Walker has given a 
very interesting comment. Now, um, if you use a natural herb, yes, Dal Carmen. Actually, I'm missing. Oh, okay. Uh, Carmen is saying that if you use a vitamin pill, you may not get much effect. I think this is what you're saying, Carmen, when you're using it with scalar, because it's mostly filler. But if you use the natural herb or substance, most likely you'll see great benefit. That could be true, Carmen. In tablets, when you buy these $15 tablets, well, most of them is just calcium carbonate. Chalk. And so it's mostly, <laughs> that's where your money's going to. Um, but of course, natural herbs, you're getting everything that the herb has in it. Another thing, Carmen, is when people use in particular, I guess, in drugs, they mix copies of their own DNA. They've used their urine, they use their blood. The cancer person I, was talk, person I was talking about before, they use their blood, and this is when the, uh, the cancer numbers took a nosedive. Um, they mix their blood with this substance and then put the whole mixture onto the receiver coil and that gave the best results, for them anyway. Scale is all new, the results are still pouring in from our users, but everything's all looking very, very positive and very exciting. Okay, so I heard my phone beep, I'll just make sure I've done everything on my phone and then I'll share my screen again and go on to this order. I'll show you my hardware setup and show you how bad it is. Okay, now, um, uh, Mario Santiago is asking another question. Okay, you're asking, is the scalar um, biofeedback more accurate and powerful than a biofeedback, uh, biofeedback scan? Pardon me. Uh, with a generator X or XM generator. I guess you're asking, Mario, using contact mode. Is it more powerful? It's different, Mario. It's different. In contact mode, with Spooky Pulse, for example, you can do a biofeedback and, and get a whole body response. That's fantastic for full body scans. But with Generator X, it's harder to do full body scans because we, we recommend to have the TENS pads close to the problem area because we're measuring the signal changes going through the TENS pads. And so all of a sudden with the Generator X, we've got a problem. We can't really do full biofeedback scans directly. But Scalar dir directly um, resolves that problem because the scalar field is passing through your whole body again. And it does it in a non-contact way. It's just a different way, Mario. I wouldn't go as far as to say it's more powerful for biofeedback. To be honest, the results we've had from scalar, from the people that have experimented and used scalar in what we now think is the right way, which is mixing parts of your own body with what you want to treat your body with and putting that whole um, mixture <laughs> on the receiver coil and then running the, the um, scalar field through your body then. It's been more than remarkable. We have had results of people that have had problems in saying that scalar is not working for them. And they're people that haven't really, um, they either haven't got the scalar field tuned correctly or they're using it wrong it's like a car you can buy a brand new car and you can sit in it, it doesn't move very fast does it it doesn't work <laughs> it's not doing anything something's wrong or well, there's a thing called an ignition key but even before that there's a thing called a driver's license where you learn how to drive the thing well with spooky scalar there is reference material uh, on our site, the Spooky2 site, the Spooky2 reviews, and there's a wealth of information on the forum as well. So it's good to learn how to use something and then use it in that way. And as I, as I said before, and I keep on saying, the best way is to mix a part of you with what you want in your body and placing that on the receiver coil. Tune again the scalar field just to make sure that it's not changed from what you've put on the receiver coil. And then you sit happily in the field. And you can have this in your bedding, you can, you know. Now I'll let you guys in on a little secret. Well, it's not really a secret because I've been saying it in all the conferences, but it's really simple. 
if you have your spooky scalar and your you, you you lean on the side of laziness you're like me okay you just want to just what you just want to sit there get it done and then be off well i sleep permanently now in our scalar field and i read a research paper where eight hertz modulation um in cells where they had damaged the mitochondria those cells that had an eight hertz modulated scalar field passed through them repaired the dna now i want my dna healed as well and so i have an xm generator not a generator x a cheapy xm generator putting an eight hertz slow signal into the modulation input of the scalar makes the light go flashing like this one when i put it on the coil but of course i take it off afterwards and i have this field in one side of the apartment and i've got the a wire going all the way through to the other side of the apartment my beds somewhere between the field and i leave it running 24 7. as i speak now in the office uh, the apartment something like 10 miles away something like that and it's running because it doesn't take much power I don't even think about it. I don't have to think about it. I know that every time I'm in the house, really, anywhere in the apartment, the scalar field has filled up. And so I've got this mitochondria DNA healing um, field pa passing through. And um, I think I'm, I'm seeing the benefits. Now, um, yeah, I, I won't say what's, what they are, but I, I feel great. Okay, I feel great. Um, and so that's a no-brainer. If you don't want to be reading through how to mix things up and this and that, just modulate your scalar field with an 8 hertz frequency. Okay, that's the lazy way. Okay, uh, another question's come through. Uh, this is from James Smith. If you tune the scalar field first and then place your mixture, which is your blood or herb as an example, on the receiver, do you retune the scalar transmitter again? since there's now something on the receiver. Most times, James, you don't. If it's something small, I don't really bother because as I said before, I lean on the side of lazy. But um, if it's something large, if it's a large container, now if you're using blood with a herb, I'm hoping it's not large, okay? You don't need it. You just need a small vial of the substance. You can use maybe even a few drops. So you can use the Lancet, which diabetics use for testing their glucose levels you just get a few drops if you like and, and then mix it in it's the information that's the important thing it doesn't need to be of a strong value it's only the information that everybody needs now with regards to um drugs if you if this drug is for um killing a cancer cell if you like then with your blood sample you put the drug in with the blood and you put that in the receiver coil as the um the uh, cancer cells within your blood get affected by that drug and die, they succumb. The cancer cells in your body get the information of the dying cells and also they follow suit. So it's the information, not the power. And um, that was a bit of a digression, wasn't it, guys? But um, basically, if it's large, you tune. If it's not, you don't bother. Okay, those are all the questions. Let's flick to the other video and show you how to actually connect it. So this is our setup. Now when I walk away from the microphone, you're going to lose my audio a little bit. So I'll try and do as much as I can while I'm sitting. Now this is my desk. This is my water. Okay, the um, scalar transmitters here. That's this unit here. <laughs> and it's got the wires going to and from it. It's got the generator X at the front, got two wires going to it. One is generator number one, gen one is generator number two. Generator number one goes to the digitizer, or well, it doesn't yet, but it will do in a little while. And generator number two goes to the modulation. Because generator number two is doing all the work, if you like. <laughs> and that's the receiver unit. Now, it's um, 
everything's on an angle, but I've got it on an angle just to show you. You can see that I'm in the field, the laptop's in the field, the generator X is in the field, basically everything's in the field except my lunch. So step number one is to connect up the digitizer. So I'm going to plug this into where the link cable goes in and plug the link cable on the top. I'm then going to connect generator number one to this port on the side there. Okay, they're done. Now we just do a retune to make sure everything's okay. The tuning does change a little bit generally, we find, with the digitizer there because the link cable does become more sensitive to any sort of earthing capacitance coupling that it finds. And because I've got mine, <laughs> even my earth cables on the ground and coiled up and the ground's got its reinforcing because it's a concrete floor, it's going to be pretty difficult, but I'll, I'll try and get some sort of signal. Okay, that's tuned at 5.4 megahertz. Okay, now I'm going to go to sharing screen and I'm going to show you the software side. Okay, now I will move myself up here so that we can see most of the controls. So it all happens down here. Now this is a pre-release of Spooky, it's December the 6th. So there will be some controls that may not be on your version of Spooky. The controls I've added are to improve the results of biofeedback scans and other things as well. Now, already I saw on the front of the generator that generator number one was this unit here, uh, this number here, 21, and generator number two was 25. The first thing you do is you set up generator number two, the slave. So in the presets tab, you go to buy feedback, you go to scalar digitizer, and you go to the slave preset. You then go to the settings tab. Remember, generator number 21 is the master and so in the settings you've got to change the shadowing to the same number as generator number one having done that you go to the control tab overwrite generator and you click on generator number two that sets up the slave you return to the presets and go on to the master Mass is nice and simple, you don't have to do anything. Now overwrite and you click on the master pre master generator. Okay, have you got so far? All you need to do now is click on the scan button. So we'll click on scan and see what happens. The waveforms load for the both of those generators because both generator number one and two are running. And you see generator number one has gone purple, generator number two has gone green because it's running, it's applying the frequencies. And now you can see the biofeedback ticking away there. Now because anything I do in the field is going to produce a, is produce a change. So I'll just double check to make I'll just double check to make sure that everything's working. Okay, it's it's found my hand there and it's gone away there. So it's it's seeing the effect there. So yeah. It's got a few signals there. I'll just double check something.
See on generator number one, which is 21, the amplitude is zero. So it's not actually producing any output. It's only number two, which is producing the output. Well, it's going to, on this estimation, take 20 minutes. I've been playing around with this preset, and the preset will change by the time I finish with it. But I'll go through some of the changes that I've done. You can ask questions as I go through because um, this will be new to you. There's new ways that Spooky does biofeedback. There's new control here, loops. Spooky can loop biofeedbacks and then take an average sample, sorry, an average of each of those samples within the loop. It's similar to samples per step, but it's an advancement on that because the um, each sample, each frequency sample is uh, at a great distance, a great time apart. So if the first scan scans 100 hertz, when the second scan scans 100 hertz, it's it could be something like two minutes afterwards. If you do samples per step. All the samples are within a, within a very short period of time. So if there's any electrical noise or any physical movement in your body, they will be amplified by the samples per step. And so it's a very good feature here. Um, at the moment I'm playing with three, but I may, I may change that in the final release of the preset. And the number on the right-hand side of that shows you the current loop that's running. So it was running on the first one. Another thing that's changed is here, there's a baseline button. When the generator runs, we'll do a base, we'll do a baseline scan. Um, what Spooky does is it measures the signal without anyone in the field. And so if I'm out of the field, <laughs> I can do a baseline scan. After this is completed, I'll, I'll stop the biofeedback. After it's completed, I can then do a normal scan. I can then do a normal scan, and then the, the baseline will um, be subtracted from the results. So, only for, so it only looks for the change in the signal. It's like um, in a noisy environment here, in a bad environment, where I'm sitting between these two units, Spooky will um, do a baseline scan, pick up all the noise that's between here, the environmental signal, and then I'll then do a biofeedback scan, and Spooky will automatically, while this button is green, will automatically subtract the environmental signal from the new signal. And the difference is going to be me. Okay, so uh, this is another big change that's taken place there. There's other changes as well, but most of them are under the, under the hood. Okay, so we'll stop the share. We'll go into the correct video and I'll just make sure there's no other, no other questions that have come through. Okay, if you, if you heard a few beeps come through, okay, um, Mario, you're asking, is the scalar field affected by EMF interference? The scalar field is not affected by EMF interference. However, the unit that transmits the scalar field and the unit that receives it are both sensitive to EMF, not the scalar field itself. Okay, uh, Jory Pomerantz asks, you cannot do phase angle, right? What is the scan you have selected? <laughs> uh, well, you can do scale, uh, phase angle, why not? It's another option in Spooky. What I am doing, Jory, is not measuring this, the phase angle of the scalar field. I'm measuring the, the phase angle of the signal passing through the link cable which indirectly then goes to the scalar field. Okay, another one from uh, jo uh, Jory Pomerantz. Um, they say in the Rife community, 
life community. Um, the low frequencies are metabolic and high frequencies are mortal oscillatory frequencies. I can tune the scalar device to, to scan 0 to 15 kilohertz. So it shows metabolic disturbances instead of colds. Okay, well, if you do um, think that low frequencies are metabolic and high frequencies are mortal oscillatory frequencies, um, in that case, you can do it. It's, it's, there's no restrictions there. Certainly, you can scan from DC all the way up to whatever frequency you like with Spooky Scalar. There's no restrictions there, Jory. So, um, sure, you can go up to 15 kilohertz if you like. There's several lines of thought, Jory. It's not quite as clear cut as that. Um, and the Rive community isn't quite as cohesive <laughs> as you may imagine. We'd like to think it is. But there's people that are arguing all the time and disagreeing with each other. We try and bring some sort of cohesion to it. But I guess as long as we're human, it's never going to happen. Okay, so any other questions coming through? No questions on the Zoom, no questions on Facebook. Gosh, guys, we're uh, 9.30 we started. So we're actually an hour. We actually did right, right on time for finishing. Are they, I, I heard... Um, let's have a look. The baseline. I'll go back to share screen and just go a little bit more into the um, into the um, software side. Share, show, share, and a presenter. Okay. Now it's done the baseline. Now it's found the baseline has been created. When it's been created, you've got to then run a scan and not change any parameters. If you change any of these parameters, then the, the same baseline will no longer apply. Each frequency point will change, for example, if you change the step size. So you don't change anything here. You then run a scan and the scan will subtract through the baseline from the result. So it gets the raw information. Now, this is actually a really powerful feature. Um, in the past, you'd have to do it manually, and there's no way of automating it. So now it's been automated, and anyone can do it. And any scan you do will, will um, use the baseline you're subtracting. So that's, that's what you do anyway. Uh, OK. Uh, Oh, it's just a comment. Another one from Jory is, is thanking me for my time. Hey, Jory, it's no, no, no problem. Or in New Zealand, we'd say no worries. Um, we want the information out there, you know. We don't want to have confusion. We know that the system is a little bit complicated, so we try and try and make it as usable as possible. Sometimes you just have to, um, you know, learn a few things to make things happen. But it's exciting things. You know, like, like even now, the fact that we've got something that can scan inside your head is kind of cool, you know. Okay, so um, baseline, the button's green. If I did a biofeedback now, the results will be very small numbers. And the, in the demonstration, it was around 360. You can see the scale here. But if I do another scan, it'll be less. And that's because it's subtracting. So... Um, that's that. What other changes can I show you? Yes, if you do use a... Oh, okay, I selected the wrong generator. Okay, and I'll go to scan. Now, the... Um, the what? If you do use the after scan feature in, in a uh, scalar biofeedback, you'd run on your slave generator, which in this case is number 25. Um, now it's interesting how it said 20 minutes here, but it was quite a bit less. I'll see, I'll see in a little while. This is a pre-release, so I'm <laughs> a bugbear at the moment is the estimated duration, which is in the scan um, box here. I've got to break that one out. It's 
And there's one other problem I've got to sort as well. So it's still a pre-release, it's not the final release. But there will be some form of baseline there, maybe change a little bit in, in the presentation. But there will be some way where you can have a baseline and then subtract that from the readings in the scan. Yeah, so other things I can show you in the, in the um, oh, in the, I've set it to three loops. And so it'll loop three times. Oh, that'll be what finished so quickly. Because, of course, when you're doing a baseline, you don't do a loop. You only run the baseline once. So Spooky is smart enough to know this. After it's done the first loop, it stops. And so now we're doing a biofeedback run. It'll take three times as long because it's running the loop three times. Okay. More questions. Hey, I love it. Um, Cheryl Lynn, or oh, an off-topic question. <laughs> different people say different things. Uh, oh, this is about Spooky Remote. Oh, well, it's Friday, so I'll answer it. If I use my DNA in a remote, shouldn't it target my children as well? People are saying it could. It doesn't make, I guess, it, I think it truncated your message, but it, um, maybe you were saying it doesn't make sense. Okay, Cheryl, this is how it is. Um, we're using DNA to transport information in Spooky Remote. Now, for anyone who's watching this video and doesn't know what Spooky Remote is, it's a way of transporting information um, from your, your generator rig to yourself, and you may be miles away, uh, using DNA entanglement. DNA entanglement isn't the absolute most precise term that we could use. A more precise term is molecular entanglement. The DNA came from the same source, was created at the same time. And so your DNA is in the nail. Your child's DNA was created at a different time. So it's not getting the frequencies which have, uh, which are being applied to your nails or some other DNA source of your body. And so, no, it's not going to go to your children. And I know that people are going to disagree with me, but it's life. This is the life community. But this is, well, that's my point of view, okay? And I, I, I'm, I'm kind of in the hub. I, I get it from all sides. And so, but this is, this is the, um, this is um, how I see it. And this is what I see as well. And what I see from most of the people that report back to me. We've got some people that are that have the ability to truly feel frequencies. We found that some people are very, very special. And we, when we were developing our speaking remotes, we um, we asked these people to help us, and they astounded us to how 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 accurate how accurate they were and how sensitive they were to the frequencies they were telling us when the unit was running even even without us telling them they, they were they were running the show so um, we know something for a fact and this thing about the DNA from your um, progeny the from your child I mean um, yes your DNA is shared but the the source of the, the time of creation is different. And so even though we call it DNA entanglement, it's more like molecular entanglement. So no, um, it won't affect your children. Okay, uh, Cheryl Lynn again. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Same question. I see you've added. You've, uh, yeah. Um, okay, that's, that's actually a fault on my side because the people haven't given it as a, as a single message. You sent it correctly. Yes, I heard quantum entanglement only happened between DNA crystals at the same time. Oh, you've you've given the answer the same as me. The child was created at a different time from mine. Cheryl, you've had it on the button. Yep. Okay. So that's great. You've that that is true. Um, your child's DNA was created at the same time. It wasn't made at the same time, and that's when the entanglement is created. Um, when the connection between the DNA is formed. And so if you use a pest eradication preset, 
on a, on an ant that's bravely volunteered <laughs> itself. Um, you may get rid of the nest, but you won't get rid of all the ants of its species, which I don't know. It's, it's not a bad thing because life is life. We need all life, we need good and bad. Uh, so it's probably a good thing, I think. Okay, now, um, any other questions? Nothing else on Facebook. Um, other changes? Big changes under the hood. Um, but nothing really much to show you. All the changes are itemized in the changes document on my website. Okay, it's done the scan. These are the hits. It's taken into account the baseline. And you can see that the numbers here are much less than what you normally get. So um, there we have it. Now the... Um, as I say, this pre-release, I've still got to work on the code and do some more testing. The baseline was just a very, very recent addition, so I've got to confirm that everything's working fine. Um, so normally what you do is you'd save it and then um, go from there. So that's it. I'll exit out from the sharing and see if any other questions came through okay okay a question from Carmela. she's asking how long will it take into the cancer region gigahertz to scan well gigahertz is beyond the capabilities Carmela, of our generators we can go up to in the megahertz range generator x can go up to 40 megahertz the modulation of the scaling units can go up to around 5 megahertz, but the signal is mostly modulation at that stage, so it's not much benefit. Oh, I understand what you're asking. You're asking me how long will it take us to develop a machine that will scan in the gigahertz range? <laughs> um, we're, we're hoping next week, Carmen. <laughs> uh, no, it'll take a bit longer than that. Um, it's very interesting. We don't know whether the scalar itself can work in the gigahertz range. And we also don't know whether it will be beneficial because the higher the frequency, the higher the electron potential and the greater the risk in those higher frequencies. X-rays and other frequencies in the very high range are inherently dangerous. Even ultraviolet, which is, which is the high side of just above the visible is dangerous as well. So um, we may never do it. We don't like to, to um, think of something which can be dangerous. Kamala Gertzen, you're asking a question. Uh, okay, for applying the frequencies that were found in a scalar biofeedback a la remote, um, would it be better to, to use a spooky uh, Spooky remote, or is it better? I better read the question again. For applying remote, would sample digitizer scans be better than scalar digitizer scan? Oh, I understand. Is it better to use your sample digitizer scans for Spooky remote, or is it better to use scalar digitizer scans? Better. Jury is still out on that one, Thomas. Um, not sure. Maybe it is better. My, my initial thought is, um, if you ask me for an answer right now, a scalar, uh, sorry, a sample digitizer would be better for remote application. But I'm really not sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, next week, I, I reserve the right to change my mind. Okay, um, Margaret Munn, um, you've asked me for a full link again that starts with and then you're given a link. I'll leave that for uh, the support staff to answer because I haven't gotten I haven't got the ability to answer that now. Um, I can't post I can't paste sorry links 
but maybe Sam or one of Sam's helpers could help. Uh, Margaret, you're also asking, uh, my scalar has the strongest light at 5.9, that's 5.9 megahertz. Is this because part of the connecting wires lie on the floor? Or is it because I have the scalar on the floor and the wires looped over the wooden current rods so the line goes up and down? Hmm. Is this, and you also ask about whether it's stronger if the frequency is higher. The, well, in my setup, in my apartment, I actually, I'm over concrete, which is over steel reinforcing, but I keep it low. I don't go up or down. I think that the link cable is quite sensitive also to the fuel that runs between the two units. And so if you, if you go up into your, um, uh, into your, on your wooden, I'm trying to imagine how you'd have it set up. If you go up, try and keep it up, I guess. Or if you go down, keep it, try and keep it down. When you have a field crossing a conductor, it's, it's always um, best to cross it at 90 degrees, not to run along it. And the link cable can, is basically running along the field. So try and keep the link cable away from the field. If you're going down, that may be the problem. I'd say that um, the, the wire on the floor wouldn't be much of a problem. I would be inclined to keep it, this is a test, okay? Keep it on the floor all the way. Be, um, this is ugly, <laughs> let's do it. And then if it, if it um, tunes higher, then so be it. Now 4.9 is quite low on the tuning range. We recommend anything you know, around the five mark. But 4.9 still is acceptable. Is it more strong when it's tuned at 6.5? No. The, the higher frequencies doesn't mean it's stronger, Margaret. Um, it just means that that is a frequency that the two units are singing happily to each other the best with the scalar field humming between you two. Okay. Uh, Carmel, you've got a new question. How long will it take to scan in the, sca in the cancer region using the megahertz range? Oh, okay, so I answered the, wrong, the question incorrectly. Okay. Um, how long will it take? Well, I tell you what, um, Carmel, um, you, you play with the parameters in the preset. You load the preset for doing a biofeedback scan using your scalar digitizer, and then you increase the frequency. Uh, at the moment, it's 50 kilohertz. Let's say you go up to um, um, 1 megahertz. You change it to 1 megahertz, and then you, you tab out from that frequency field. The estimated time will be shown on the bottom of the screen. And so that will give you a direct answer. Um, and as I said just a little bit earlier, it's a little bit of a work in progress because... Um, this time estimation is a little bit out. But by the time we come to the full release, I'll have that nailed. Okay, well, I think that's me timed up. I'll, I'll just, um, oh, I see. Um, oh, Mario Santiago is asking, any new hardware projects in the works? Well, there's always things in the works, and there's one thing, um, well, always things taking away. You know, very interesting, very exciting from about this one that's very, very exciting. But I can't say a word, sorry, sorry. Um, as, I, as I said earlier, you know, this Rife community is not quite as cohesive as one might think. So not everyone's on our side. <laughs> so, yes, there's a lot of things that we have on the boil. And um, we're working as fast as we can, as best we can to get things completed. It's exciting times too because we've now got a new office we moved um, maybe a couple of months month, or maybe one month ago time flies and we've got a we've now got a laboratory which we're going to set up as a, as a biological laboratory and we're going to be doing testing so we need to know we need good microscopes so if anyone knows of any good biological microscopes to use ones that have got a good a, a decent magnification um, please drop us a line. We'd, I'd love to know because I haven't got much experience in microscopy. We've had a couple of experts on SAMAS, 
but neither of them have recommended a specific unit to use. And so we'd like to, um, we've had one Olympus recommended to us by Ed, but they no longer make that model, which is unfortunate. So if you can just let us know. We want to go to a higher magnification than blood cell analysis. We want to see as much detail as possible. And it's biological tissue, which is transparent as well. So it is a little bit difficult. But we know there's good micro microscopes out there. We just have to find them. And then we've got to try and find the money to buy it. <laughs> but we'll try and make it happen. Now, oh, just another point before I leave. Some people have asked, why is the database smaller than before? Well, um, this is in, in the new release of Spooky. Well, it's never smaller, it's always larger. But what Spooky is always doing is improving. Now, Spooky database has got lots of programs. A lot of the programs have got lots of frequencies in them. Some programs can be combined. Um, programs for different subspecies can be combined. So instead of having a lot of programs with one frequency, you can have fewer, frequency, uh, fewer programs with two frequencies, for example. And so we've refined the algorithm that Spooky uses to combine and create these programs, in particular with the base pair, the molecular weight, and DNA databases. And so the, and so the program count has reduced, but the number of entries has increased. And so don't panic. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right. The, pro the database is always growing. I've never known it to have fewer entries. Don't look at the number of programs. Look at the number of frequencies because they're the number of ailments that the database can address. Now, I'm going to share my screen one more time because I've just had, I've just had another thought. And the thought was in the um, – this is the database now. You can see that there's – it was above 40,000, but now it's 37,593. So some people are panicking. What have we done? We've, we've taken away some, some programs, but relax. It's all under control. Every program you know and love is still there. It's just really when you scroll down and you go down to the molecular weight programs, and you get the ones in particular for the hepatitis. There's huge amounts of hepatitis. If you do a search, oops, oops, Hep uh, hepatitis. Have I done that right? Hep. I'm sure I've chosen something. Here's another one. It's got um. Ah, uh, okay. There we go. There's a lot of results for Helicobacter, and you've got all these ones here. Now, in the DNA frequencies, you see that some of these programs last for 18 minutes. Uh, the Peloria A, it's got, it's got certain um, subspecies in there. It's got six of them that are combined in one program. See how they're numbered one to six. What you can do um, if you just want to run one of the programs, let's say you want to run number number four. Elect <laughs> oh, you just remember number four. I'll try and say that we're now started at Lekvig 86. It must be in a Russian one. Um, I, can I can select it, load it, and I can save it. One, two, three, four. The fourth one is the one I want. And so I delete all the frequencies and just keep number four. If I just want to run that one, and I call it my program, and I save it. And so if I search for my program, <laughs> there it is. I load it. I delete. I um, unload the helicopter one. Go and load it into into a generator. I load it. Actually, I load it into my slave because the slave is actually the uh, one that does the work with the. Uh, with a scalar. At the moment it's shadowing, so it doesn't let me run. So I remove the shadowing by making it zero, go to control, overwrite the memory again, and run. And so what I'll do is I'll be running just by one frequency, which is that one species of uh, the helipori, uh, hel uh, <laughs> one species. Um, yeah, that's what you do anyway. But I wanted to show you something really good. Now there's a, there's a, Encyclopedia now. And so if I do a search for acne, 
as well as showing the programs that are for acne, and there's a lot. There's also encyclopedia entries down in the program description. And so you can learn about it. There we go. Now, isn't that cool? Now, Spooky is always about empowerment. So we've now got a way where we're passing on this information. And it's free information because Spooky's the software is free. And you can learn all these nuggets of information. It's not necessarily about frequencies. It's also about cleanliness. Sunlight exposure, helping acne, tanning, hiding acne. So much information here. Look at it. It even goes into which drugs are useful. You can find which drugs are good. Um, okay, so we, know, we found that uh, benzoyl peroxide is good. So do a copy there. Let's find it. Of course it's in the database. Spooky's got everything. I'll move that one. There. Now I can run that, the, that frequency you know, and, and treat myself and get rid of my acne. Speaking has now become a real powerhouse with this facility. And look at that volume of information it's giving. This, 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 more, more, more. It's amazing. How cool is that? And cross-references as well. Now, it doesn't just end there, you know. The encyclopedia, the information is come from nine different sources, all been processed. And um, some of these sources have been themselves mined from multiple sources. It's, 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 it's bringing this information all into one point. And so you can sit down and search for something really obscure and find information on it. If you do, if you select the program here, then the um, Spooky will give you information only pertaining to that product. It won't do a full search. Okay. If you do a search for, for uh, let's have it. I, I should have um, prepared this, but we'll do it. If I search for SIST, it'll tell you these encyclopedia entries as well as... Um, um, results in the database but there's a new search and this is a full search in encyclopedia anywhere where the text cyst comes in not just at the very beginning like it does in the encyclopedia matches spooky will return it it's as if you don't need more information than this and so if i do the encyclopedia search it gives me all the cyst even things that aren't necessarily pertaining to cyst. We're talking about CT scans here and how cysts can be detected from uh, through use of a CT scan. Here we go. A CT scan is performed on a pelvic CT. Anywhere where the word cyst appears, it will make it uppercase if you do an encyclopedia search. So it's a polycystic kidney disease. The, the text cyst is made capital to make it stand out. So just when you thought that Spooky couldn't get any better, he does. There's currently something over, over 9,000 encyclopedia entries within Spooky. So that's pretty cool. So... Um, that's two really big developments, let alone the, uh, the baseline development I showed you with the biofeedback and, and other things that we've done in the back, in the, under the hood for Spooky. We've now got an encyclopedia. And of course, just before Spooky's release, we always update the databases to the latest versions. Don't always look at the number of programs. Mm -hmm. If you go to the system, you'll see that the number of entries is usually given in the databases. You can see the encyclopedia has got 9,171 entries. So the entries for each of the databases are shown, and those will grow each time. So, um, yep, Spooky's always going to continue getting better. Oh, there was another question, I heard it. Um, 
Can I find out the frequency of an item using the scalar coil? Scalar coil. Oh. You're asking, Mario, can you find the frequency of a, a product? Oh, I think what Mario is asking, can you put a product on the coil and find the frequency of that product? No, Mario. No, I don't believe you can. Um, however, um, already in the database, and Spooky's got the largest database in the universe, I'm told. Um, it, um, you just search for any anything and, and you'll find more than likely something there. You've got the main database, you've got the DNA database, molecular weight database. Molecular weight generally is all the drugs, but also healthy products as well. Base pair database, which is living things, things that have DNA. And so you've got the, um, all these bacteria, microbes, gosh, so many, it just goes on and on. And then the custom set, which is the frequencies which I have created and put in there. So there we have it, salmon number 80. It was fun, it was smooth. Makes me feel a little bit old. Number 80, gosh, you know, <laughs> when we were running there, I think, gosh, you know, um, I'm never going to get up to 50. I mean, 50 came, I was really excited, but now we're up to 80. Um, yeah, soon we're up to 100. Okay, well, I don't know who's going to be on next week, but um, stay tuned. We'll let you know as soon as we know. Um, and, um, yeah, watch the space for new information. You know, Spooky's got lots of sub of websites. We have the Spooky2Reviews.com. We've got websites dedicated to Scalar, if you want to find out more, Spooky2Scalar.com. And other websites link from there. We're always trying to give as much information as possible out. It's all very well being able to make products, but you've got to know how to use them and get also information of how other people have used them successfully. So, you know, the Rife community is learning all the time. We like to think that now we're at the forefront, but quite often we talk wrong. <laughs> Sometimes an expert comes along and really blows us out of the water. But then we take it on board and we, we spread it out to everyone else. So it's all good. I mean, the SEMA program itself is all about teaching people new things. And today we learned about Scalar Digitizer, using a scalar field for biofeedbacks. A world first, only, only here at Spooky. Watch your space because there are exciting new things coming, things I can't talk about, but things that are, are really, really going to change the way that we think of treatments. Think big, and that's our next project. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Catch you all next week. And don't forget, please, Wednesdays, coffee time. When Echo Lee sits down, tells you about the latest, what we're up to, and talks to you about things of interest, things of health matters, things that are more interesting about the things that I talk about anyway, <laughs> which isn't hard to say. But it's lovely to see my regulars back online and all the questions coming through here online and also on Facebook. Take care, everybody. We've got your best interests at heart. We're trying our best to make sure that we've got the best products for you. Till next time, bye-bye.